Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am a doctor that works in the UK. I'm a mom, I'm a wife and on this channel it's a bit eclectic, it's all about me. So I share a lot of medical advice on my Monday videos so please check them out if you haven't already. But then on these Friday videos they're a bit more relaxed. I do vlogs, I share my life insights, some um, lessons that I've learned and also just some things that go in my mind that I think I might want to share with the internet out there. And so today is one of those videos, a nice little sit down one and it's because the day that you're watching this, well the day this comes out, if you're watching it the day it comes out, in two days I am turning 29. Yep. I'm turning 29, that's my last year of my 20s. And um, I'm usually the youngest, well, I actually think about most of my friend groups, I'm the youngest out of the majority of my friends. And it means that most people have already gone before me, they're in their 30s. And I know that there's a lot of anxiety and worry that goes along with getting into your 30s, you know, finishing your 20s, but I've got to be honest, I'm really excited. I've heard great things about your 30s, I heard that you have better boundaries and you care less about what people think and all these wonderful things and so I'm excited to um, get into that journey. I've had a great 20s, um, I feel like I've done a lot, I feel like I've travelled, there's still loads more places in the world that I want to see but I've travelled, I've gotten married, I've completed my degree, I've become a GP, I've become a mother, I've bought a house, I've, you know, I've done things um, and so my 20s feel great. Um, but I'm excited for the next chapter. But what I thought I would do, and I've seen a lot of people doing this, this bucket list of 30 things they want to do before they're 30. Now I think most people make this list like when they're 21 or 25 or you know somewhere in their 20s but I decided to give myself one year. And so the list is quite realistic I hope. Um, and when I turn 30 I'll come back here and tell you what I've kind of gone up to. But there's 30 things, I've got my iPad here, so if I keep looking down, that's what I'm looking at because I'm not remembering 30 things off the top of my head. But I've tried to make some kind of order to it, but some of them are random, and so let's just get into it. Um, some of them might give a bit more information to them, others, you know, they're self-explanatory, so let's go. Okay, let's start off with work. I've got four things that I want to do for work um, before I turn 30. So the first is lifestyle medicine. I'm quite interested in lifestyle medicine, but I want to get more, get further qualifications in it. I want to become more formally trained in lifestyle medicine, and there's a diploma that I'm planning to complete um, in the next year. So that's the first one, get qualified in lifestyle medicine. Um, also my family planning qualifications that I can actually give certain types of contraception, such as coils and implants, that's the other thing that I want to do as well. And then other things that I just want to learn about, the third thing is improving my um, knowledge on like skin, so dermatology, and also joints and bones, so what we call musculoskeletal medicine, MSK. Um, and that's because I feel like I give out a lot of the same advice, but it's problems that I see day in, day out, and I feel like I could be doing a bit more. And then my fourth thing is that I want to learn more about the menstrual cycle. Now I've seen lots on the gram, um, social media, on the media, all over the place of people getting more interested in their menstrual cycle and what the different st um, phases and stages mean for how productive we can be as women and I think that's great advice to know for myself but also share with my patients and so that's the fourth thing I want to do for work. Now number five um, and number six, these are more about social media. So number five is about what I want to do on this channel and at the moment we're just under 400 subscribers which I think is pretty good and quite like overwhelming to think about um, and that's just been in the last five, six, yeah the last five months that I've been on here and so I'd love it if by the time I'm 30 I had 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watched hours because once you get to that threshold you can start to monetize your channel and I think another stream of income is always a bonus. And number six is finding a bit more of what my social media niche is. Um, so we're all, you know, people that um, advise on how to like build a social media brand, they talk a lot about finding what your niche is, finding what you're talking about is. I feel like on my YouTube channel, I've kind of, 
I'm developing that, I'm finding the areas that I'm interested in that I want to share with you and things that I can see what things you know you guys enjoy seeing but more on the other areas of social media so such as on my Instagram and whether I open any other accounts I just need to kind of find where my voice is in those areas and so that's one of what I want to figure out in the next year. Um, moving on to my family so I think this is number seven so number seven I want to extend my family I don't think any more information needs to be given for that one. Um, also, I want to do some more mommy-daughter adventures. Um, my whole experience as a mother has been interrupted many times with different lockdowns and COVID and all the things that I thought I would do with my daughter haven't really happened, but I'm excited. I want to do some adventures. I've said that the next sunny day when I'm off work, me and Isabella are going to the beach. If Raph's off as well, we're all going to three. But if not, the two of us are getting in the car, we're going to the beach, we're eating fish and chips, and we're having ice cream. Um, and so I want to do some more mommy-daughter adventures. Next, I need to learn how to cane row. Um, I think a lot of people call it cornrows. Um, but yeah, I call it cane rowing, and like most of my family does. But yeah, so I need to learn how to cane row. I can flat twist, and so I would do all these nice styles with Isabella's hair but they don't last as long, they're not as neat, and I just need to know how to cane row. I feel embarrassed that I don't know how to cane row, but I didn't grow up with a sister, and I feel like a lot of people tell me they learn how to cane row on their sisters, on their, yeah, and I didn't have one, I had a brother, and he cut his hair all the time. So, <laughs> that is my aim, I need to learn how to cane row. Anybody got any suggestions? I've watched so many YouTube videos, but it's like my hands just don't move the way they're supposed to. I'm gonna figure it out. Next is find a babysitter. Now, I think we may have one um, that we can use, but basically for our family, for our, my marriage, I need to have regular date nights with my husband, and that means I need to find a babysitter. So by the time I'm 30, I'm gonna be sorting out my childcare so that me and my husband can have regular date nights, even as parents. And the final thing for my family is exploring the UK more. Now, I love to travel. We're big travellers. I said that in my 20s, we travelled. You know, me and my husband have seen lots of places. I could sit here and list them off, but I just don't, you know, it's not that interesting. But um, COVID has kind of put a spanner in the works in terms of travel. Also, having a little one, those long haul flights. It's not really happening and also if me and Rafa are just going away, we're not going to be going away for like two weeks at a time and leaving Isabella with whoever. So we need to kind of change the way that we travel and that's why I want to explore the UK more. I'm discovering there's so many beautiful places and interesting places in the UK and I didn't really know about them because I kept catching flights rather than getting in my car and seeing what's about. And so we went to the Lake District last year, we're going to, um, where are we going, Pembrokeshire this year in Wales and we like looked at Snowdonia as well. We went to Snowdonia the other day. I wanna go down to Cornwall and just explore the UK. Now the next category I'm calling finances and the first thing I wanna do is to get another two streams of income. So right now, um, me and my husband, we both got, you know, conventional careers, we're employed, and so we have those very reliable streams of income. We are starting to build some other avenues as well, um, but I think it's really important to, like, diversify your um, source of income, have different streams coming in, um, so that's what I'm working towards. And I think in the next year, I'm hoping that we've got two more streams coming in. And so yeah, watch this space. And then the next thing is also to bulk up our emergency fund. Basically an emergency fund is where you have a stack of money that you don't touch apart from in emergencies. It's separate from any investing, it's separate from anything that you spend, you literally don't touch it. And it sits in a savings account that's there for you, really easily accessed. Um, and if you ever deplete from it, you always build it up again. And so it's separate to any other savings that you do. It's a very specific um, pot. And I want our emergency fund to be three months, three months of our income. Um, so that's what I'm working towards and I'd like to bulk that up um, by the time, by next year. Now next is about our home and I've never done any projects on our home. Um, I'd like to convert our garage and make it into a playroom. And I want to do that by the time I'm 30. Um, Isabella's toys are already taken over my living room and my house and I want an area that I can put them and put them away for like, if I need some like adult space or adult time or she's gone to bed and I don't want to be staring at the ball pit. And so um, 
yeah I want to convert the garage and I'm excited because I'm into renovation there's so many plans that I have for this house so many so many but the first one is the garage and the next thing in terms of a home is that I want to learn how to garden now our back garden at the moment is just a big old piece of lawn and um, we've done nothing with it this year we got a play set I think I've shown I showed you in a previous vlog and I also got a vegetable patch installed which I still haven't even filled with soil but I'm getting there and I want to learn how to garden I want to plant flowers and I want to plant vegetables and grow them and yeah so that's my next project and I want to do with Izzy she's a bit of a force of destruction at the moment so I'm sure it would just be mud everywhere and mess I mean might not actually grow anything in the next year but I want to at least attempt it by next year 18. so these next ones are all about my health so improving my mental health i've shared on my instagram and a little bit on here that this last year has been very stressful and i've experienced burnout really really struggled with it um and it was starting to affect my sleep i was feeling quite anxious the way in which i was eating was changed and it was quite significant and so i reached out to something called practitioner health which is um a healthcare which is a, a place where doctors and dentists struggling with their mental health for whatever reason can access to get some more help. And so I did that and um, that's I'm, I'm working on the next year, you know, really building good mental health. Um, so actually when I'm recording this, tomorrow I'm doing my first session of cognitive behavioural therapy. I recommend therapy to my patients all the time, but I don't know much about it. I've never really done it myself, um, you know, conventionally like that. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to um, actually live what I preach as well. I think doctors often are the worst patients, but I'm trying to be a good patient now. And so that's one thing to really improve my mental health. Next thing is to drink more water drink more water, there's nothing else to say, I need to do it. Third thing is my skin. Um, I've always struggled with skin problems, um, but recently as I became more stressed, I became more dehydrated, and my skin has just been the worst it's been since I was a teenager really, or my, my early 20s, and so I'm working to create a skincare routine um, so that I can look after this i'm going to take some before and after pictures because basically my birthday list is just a whole load of skincare products and different things that i'm going to try and so um i'm going to do some before and after pictures and hopefully in the next year there's a good transformation i can share with you what i did number four is to give blood so I know the importance of giving blood, but for some reason I haven't done it before. There's been many times where I've thought about it, where I said I'm going to do it and then something would happen, or there weren't um, appointments that like, really like worked with my work schedule at the time, but no more excuses. And on the 16th of June this year, I am giving blood for the first time, me and my husband will be, and it's something I would encourage you all to do as well. And find some movement that I enjoy. Now, I love to before I had Isabella, before I became a mum, I had a lot more control over my time and I would go first thing in the morning and I'd love to lift weights. Um, I also found martial arts that I really enjoyed that as well but my schedule keeps changing and I keep struggling to find some movement that I can do in a sustained way. I enjoy walking. Every time I'm with Isabella I walk. I try and get outside most days but I want to find something that I'm that I really enjoy at a time that I can actually do it and so that's a big thing that I'm trying to figure out and I need to get it done before I turn 30 so that I can still have some good movement and some good strength and be fit and healthy when I am reaching those 30s. Um, the next two are about my spiritual life. The first one is to pray more and pray more consistently. It is amazing how many of my prayers have been answered. Um, at times unexpected to me. Sometimes I didn't even know they had been answered until I look back on things. Um, but I really see the importance of prayer, the importance of that quiet time, and I want to do it more. And so that's the first one. And the second one is also about spending more time with God. And that is um, making sure that I have really protected devotional time. Um, before Isabella, it was easier to find that. I, you know, I'd have time in the morning and then she's, then I had Isabella and then I was able to do it, you know, while she was like newborn lying on me and 
in those times um, and be able to do it in the daytime a bit more flexibly. And then she went through a spell where she wasn't sleeping well. So she was getting up very early in the morning and um, waking up several times in the night. And then in the daytime, I wasn't able to have that quiet time because she was so active. And so I found that my devotional time, my time of worship with God was really being disrupted and I've struggled to get back into the habit. And so that's something that I really need to improve and ASAP, so I need to do it from 30. And then the last six, these ones are all things that are just for me. Um, I didn't really know what category to put them in, so they're a bit random, but here they are. So learn to say yes and no more. I'm very bad at saying yes and saying no. I say them those answers to all the wrong things. I found myself saying no to things that nourish me. So when I'm running out of time, I'll take things off the plate that actually nourish me. I find myself saying yes to things that deplete from me or yes to everyone else's desire for my time rather than um you know rather than doing what I want to do and so I'm really trying to say yes and no more in the right ways um saying yes to myself a bit more and saying no to things that kind of um break the boundaries that I'm trying to make start cooking for fun again so i love cooking i really really do but in the last year or so it's become more of this necessity and it's become a bit of a burden and it's i'm doing it at times where i don't enjoy i like cooking first in the morning when i've just got i know when i've got all this energy i love cooking then i like cooking big batches and cooking with you know throwing things in and experimenting and trying new cuisines um but recently that's all gone to the wayside i'm cooking in the evenings when i'm tired and i just want to get back to it so that's one is to develop some kind of capsule wardrobe right now my body's changed a lot after having Isabella I actually quite like my body now um but I need to find some clothes <laughs> that actually fit me and so I feel like my whole wardrobe at the moment is just not to my taste really and with all the different lockdowns I like shopping in person I haven't really been able to do that um, and online shopping went for a new body type that then you're used to is really difficult because sizing how things fit how styles work with your new found body um is hard so i want to build a new wardrobe for myself and i want it to be a bit of a capsule wardrobe i'm not a massive minimalist but i do want some like timeless pieces things that i can mix and match and so that's something i'm aiming to do by next year it might not be that realistic just because like i said i'm trying to extend my family as well and so my body might change again but you know it's an aim it doesn't matter if we don't do all of them <laughs> Okay, find a mentor. Um, and really more like, not just a mentor in my career, but like a life mentor, someone that I can like bounce my ideas off, um, someone that can help to guide me and see how I can juggle this whole life that's happening. I want to take a solo break. I hear a lot of people talk about solo breaks and I think people do them like in their 20s, in their early 20s a lot of the time. Um, I didn't do that. Um, I... I don't know, I didn't feel like I, had, I needed to do a solo break before. And, you know, I met my husband when I was 19, we got married when I was 23. And so we've had so many adventures together and I've really enjoyed that. I've always had a travel buddy. And so I've not done these solo travel experiences, but they sound amazing. And now that I'm a mom and that my time is like somebody else's a lot of the time, I find myself desiring this solo trip. I like being in the house by myself sometimes. And so I'd like to take a solo trip only one, like literally I just mean like a night away or two nights away in a hotel somewhere by myself or you know renting out like a little Airbnb studio or something and going for dinner by myself and just reading and relaxing and doing whatever I need to do and um, I just want like one or two nights just to myself and the final one is quite a big goal and I'm not going to talk about it too much but I want to write a book by the time I'm 30 I didn't say publish but I want to write a book by the time I'm 13 and I'm just going to leave it there. And so that was my 30 before 30. So that's my bucket list of what I want to do in the next 12 months. There's quite a lot, but I'm going to try and figure it out and I'll be back next year to tell you how I got on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've not made a bucket list, why not make one? Um, and if you're already 30, why not make 40 things before you're 40 or 50 things before you're 50 or 60 things before you're 60 and etc, etc, etc. Um, they don't have to be massive things, they can just be little ones, but um, I hope you found it interesting and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all those good things and comment down below. See you.